Great. Ah, my name is Kent C. Dodds. I'm a software engineer from Utah. I work at Remix. I'm the director of developer experience. Uh, you might have read one of my blogs, uh, or blog posts, or listened to a podcast on kentcdodds.com. And then um, I also created Epic React.dev and testingjavascript.com. Anybody uh, use those before? That's nice. Thank you. Um, for the rest of you, those are actually on sale right now. So if you wanted to go uh, get those, then you can. And ask one of the people who raise their hands if it's worth it. Um, I'm going to be talking about the edge. And so first, I want to talk about what the edge even is. Um, so we're going to do a little bit of a history lesson on building for the web. Um, oh my gosh, I'm seeing like friends of mine, and I'm like really tempted to wave at them and call them out. But sorry, I'll give you a hug later. <laughs> um, so. The way that we build for the web is we have a client and we have a server. And the server has some information the client wants, so the client says, hey, server, I want to get that information. Uh, in our world, in the world of the web, we're getting HTML documents. And so wherever we are in the world, we need to connect to the internet and through this series of tubes of infrastructure, uh, get to that server. And then the server says, oh, I know who you are. Let me generate some HTML for you. And I'll send that right back to you. And now you can view it on the, on the screen. And that works out great. Um, except that uh, users, wherever they are in the world, need to go talk to that same server. And um, the series of tubes <laughs> that they go through uh, can make that take an exceedingly long amount of time. And uh, it reduces the user experience because the performance is so bad. So, um, but the problem is like, we need to talk to the server. Like, the server has the information that we need, right? Um, so we found out that some of the information that the user needs is n like has nothing to do with the user specifically. It's the same for everybody. Uh, so that's like your images and your CSS and your JavaScript. And so we created a content delivery network, or CDN, uh, that can hold all those files. So we just copy paste those on all of these different servers all over the world. And then the user can uh, at least get those static files wherever they are in the world. And, it, it, um, and so at least that piece can be faster. But they still have to go and get their data and get their the HTML for server rendering from that server. And so the way that this uh, works architecturally is you've got the, the user. They are requesting a document that will go to the server. That generates the document, uh, sends it back to the browser. And then at that time, the browser knows, oh, there are some like link tags and image tags. And there's uh, JavaScript script uh, tags and things. So let me go get those static assets. We get that from the CDN. So the edge. Uh, there are a couple different implementations, but uh, many of the implementations um, are coming from the CDN space. The, those who are involved or who have these servers all over the world, they thought, hey, now hold on a second. We solved the static problem by putting all those static files, copy pasting them all over our network. What if we just made it so that uh, the users of our network, like the developers, us folks, what if we made it so that we could, uh, they, they could send um, some scripts that they could run to like, maybe dynamically generate HTML, for example? And so uh, that's what many of these have done. They say, OK, now we've got this CDN of all these computers all over the world. We're going to let you upload a file. And uh, now you can run some code and dynamically handle these requests. And so now you can know who it was that's making the request. You can dynamically generate the um, HTML for that specific user. And, um, and the benefit of this is that um, because the CDN has got servers all over the place, um, the user can go to the closest server to them, uh, as far as like geolocation is concerned, and, uh, and make that request a lot faster. So that's basically what the edge is. And there are various implementations of this. There are various people or, or companies that have implemented this. So fly.io is where I host my website, and it was my first exposure to the edge. And the way that they work is they actually have, uh, they ship your Docker container in any region that you want. So I, I've got a node server in my Docker container. They, they put it in regions all over the world, and so it's like a full server. Uh, Cloudflare and Fastly and Akamai are CDNs, and they said, hey, we've got these servers all over. Let's let people run code on those servers. And they have their various different APIs for that. Um, and then Dino Deploy in the bottom right there is um, similar to Fly, except they're running Dino. And then uh, Lambda at Edge is like a serverless platform, um, but, uh, but at the edge. So you, it's regionless. It's pretty cool. Uh, so there, and there are a lot of other companies involved in this. You have your uh, data at the edge. Uh, one of our sponsors, FaunaDB, is uh, doing data at the edge. Uh, and then you also have other companies like Netlify and Vercel that are wrapping some of these services. Uh, so lots of people getting into the edge game, and it's really cool. So with this new capability, 
how do we take advantage of it uh, the best that we can? And there are a lot of approaches to this. I'm the director of developer experience at Remix, so obviously I'm going to be talking about how Remix takes advantage of these skills and abilities. Um, and the first thing that I want to talk about with, uh, oh, and by the way, if you don't know what Remix is, it's basically like v7 of, of React Router. It's like an upgrade of React Router that supports uh, server rendering. Uh, it's a compiler. Um, and it's just amazing. I, I loved it so much that I stopped doing my full-time teaching thing so I could just talk about Remix all the time. And if you follow me on Twitter, you know that I tweet about two things, Remix and Wordle. And <laughs> so, so yes, I'm super excited about Remix, and so I want to tell you a couple of things um, that Remix does on the edge. So first of all, Remix normalizes the edge. Those different providers have different APIs for the request response that, um, that they're handling for us. And um, one of them, uh, in particular, Cloudflare Workers, uh, inspired the way that Remix approached this problem um, by implementing basically the service worker spec. And so their request response API is the web fetch API. And with, uh, with Fly, you can deploy like a Docker container, so you can literally do whatever. Um, I use Express, and so Express has its own request response thing. Um, Dino actually also uses the, um, the web fetch API uh, that's ex exposed on their servers. Node, in fact, is going to have the web fetch API, uh, or I think it does in 18. Um, and then uh, Akamai has its own API. So there are a lot of different APIs. And I see Remix as kind of the jQuery for these uh, platforms because it normalizes all the platforms to the web standard. And so what that gives you is that the, the more time you spend working on Remix, the better you get at the web platform because that's the, the mental model that you're working with. Those are the APIs that you're working with. And so uh, this is an example of a part of a uh, route module in Remix. Uh, we have the loader and an action. The loader handles get request. The action handles all the others uh, for data specifically. And so that request object that you get is a web fetch request. Um, and so it, if you don't like the uh, request.headers.get with the string thing, blame the web platform. That's not our API. <laughs> um, I actually think it's fine. Um, but, uh, and then that response that you send is like a web fetch response. Uh, and then on the action side, uh, request.formData is a thing. I did not know this. Did, raise your hand if you already knew that request.formData was a thing. Wow. See, you're all, you knew more than I did when I, um, before I started using Remix. So, um, like the, the um, browser APIs already have affordances for um, handling all of these kinds of things. And so Remix, uh, rather than wrapping it with our own idea of what request response is, we expose that to you so that you can just use the web platform APIs. And I think this is something that the Edge is doing where, um, where lots of these providers are uh, moving us to just a uh, standard API for uh, request response. Uh, the next thing I want to talk about is how Remix moves code to the edge. So let's take a theoretical um, scenario where you've got a, uh, your server is deployed to, like, before edge. So you've got a server deployed to uh, Washington, D.C., and a user in Hong Kong. And they're coming all the way around the world to come get your HTML, and you're like, this is no good. And you decide, hey, you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, use Fauna DB, for example, or Dynamo DB or something, something that um, is available all over the world so that my users can get their data really fast. Well, because you're located in Washington, D.C., the users have to go all the way around the world to go generate that HTML document, and that's going to talk to the Washington, D.C., and then it'll come all the way back. Um, and this is not great. And so what you can do is you just say, well, I'll just client-side render everything, and I'll, I'll have the client do all the data fetching. So we'll take all of this code, we'll move it over to the client, and like as a like client-side rendered thing, and then have the client be making the request, and they can just request it from whatever uh, database is closest to them. So now we're on the edge for our data. Uh, still, if you want a server render, you still are going to Washington for uh, the initial shell, but, um, but that's a little bit better. Um, but what we can do with the edge, though, is instead of taking all of that code and putting it in the client, we can actually just take the server code, leave it on the server, but bring it over to the edge server that's close to them. And so what that means is that we ship less code to the browser, so we can still keep that loader and action in the, on the server. So all of that stuff, like if you're using GraphQL, you don't need the GraphQL client, you can leave that on the server. All, whatever you're using to fetch data can happen on the server, but it can be geolocated very close to where the user's at. And so when they're making the, their request, it goes straight to the Edge server that's close by them. And because that is running there, it can talk to the FaunaDB that's close to that. So you're just like in this little region, uh, and it can be really, really fast. 
and you end up shipping less JavaScript. So that's another thing that the Edge can do for us, uh, and that's, that's the way that Remix operates. Uh, the next thing is uh, progressive enhancement. So this is a really cool thing that, um, that we have on the web is the browsers actually, fun fact, they know how to make, uh, do links. They know how to do mutations. You don't need a router or anything like that. Like they, they know how to do all of this stuff. And so if you can uh, design a framework that uh, operates or, or emulates that sort of experience, then um, uh, you can uh, utilize progressive enhancement. So this is what I mean. Um, in lots of the webs uh, or websites that we're building with React, we first have to download the document, and that's going to have uh, script tags for our bundles and whatnot. So then we're going to go download our, our JavaScript. We're going to execu execute all of that and hydrate and whatnot. Uh, and now the app is ready. And we can start um, linking to different things. We can have our uh, mutations all happen you know, on submit, event prevent default, all that stuff. So um, with progressive enhancement, though, if you can make the HTML that you server render and send to your user um, render like regular forms and then like the that the browser can understand, then you can move to something more like this, where you download the document, and then the app is ready. You don't need the JavaScript for the app to work. Uh, and that's because the browser knows how to do that stuff. So if you can um, make it so that your app works before the JavaScript loads, then the entire experience is better for the user. It's really, really, really fast. And then what the, you still do download the JavaScript because it, it makes the experience better. Rather than doing full page refreshes when you submit a form, it can just do the regular fetch post uh, request. And so what, what you get when the JavaScript is finished downloading is an enhanced experience. And so what we're talking about here is the difference between uh, an JavaScript enabling the experience and JavaScript enhancing the experience. And you want to start with a baseline of a functional site that JavaScript makes better. Um, and what we've done a lot is just kind of thrown progressive enhancement out the window and said, um, our baseline is our app doesn't work until the JavaScript finishes loading, which I don't think is good. And in fact, there are a lot of websites that we build today that don't need JavaScript at all. And so if you can make your web framework work uh, from a, uh, that is progressively enhanced, then you can say, you know what? I don't think I even need JavaScript on this login page. Like, I want this login page to load like this like super, super fast. I, I don't want, need to even bother with code splitting and, and all of that stuff. It's just like there's no need for JavaScript on this page. So we'll just not do JavaScript. The form will do the, what the form does. And then uh, when that post is submitted to the server, then the server can handle it, send them to where they need to go. And now we can have JavaScript because it's like a super fancy experience. We're building Figma or something like that. So that is uh, progressive enhancement on the edge, um, making the entire experience that is ultra fast even faster because um, the Edge allows us to move code off, uh, and Remix allows us to move code off of the browser into the Edge, and then we can actually not even need the JavaScript that's left uh, for the app to start functioning right from the get-go. Okay, and then the last one is uh, Remix streams from the Edge. So um, as soon as React 18 came out with streaming, we were really excited. It's awesome because what happens now is the request comes in. And uh, before streaming, we'd have to like, generate our HTML, uh, render to string, and then we send it all back. Um, and we can actually start. And, and the problem with that is if you have data that takes a long time, like you're making a request to your database to go get the user stuff or whatever, if that query takes a long time, then you can't send anything back until that uh, string of HTML is ready. And so with streaming, you can actually say, hey, let's go ahead and start sending a response back so that the user gets something really, really fast. And then we can fill things in later. Um, and this is a really, really awesome feature of React 18. Um, and I'm really excited for you all to see Ryan's talk tomorrow because it is going to blow your minds. And I'm sorry, Ryan, for stealing a little bit of your thunder there, but it's going to be sick. Do not miss his talk because uh, streaming and Remix are like just amazing. <laughs> so, so cool. OK, so just to wrap up, this is the future. And it's so awesome. It is really, really cool. I, I fully expect that lots of us uh, will be building applications with this type of ar architecture in the future. Um, I don't think that it's necessary for every use case, but I think that the providers that I mentioned, uh, as well as others who are in this space, are making this type of thing just as simple and straightforward as Netlify made for me when I started uh, deploying client-side apps, where I just like, OK, connect this GitHub thing, and boom, now it's there. And I, it's magic, and I don't know how it works, but it's nice and fast, and I don't have to manage it. It's amazing. And uh, these provide, and Netlify is, is in the Edge game, too, and, and Vercel and these other companies, making it really easy to get all of these performance wins without having to worry about servers. And, and it's also like outrageously cost-effective as well. 
Um, it's also kind of rough. Uh, so as you like, are getting into this, remember that this is the edge, and it is the bleeding edge. And when you're on the bleeding edge, you're the one that's bleeding. Uh, so that's a joke I heard from Ryan once, and it's, it always gets chuckles. But it's true. It's true. You are the one dealing with all the fact that this is, uh, this is the leading edge here. But it's pretty sharp. It's pretty cool. Um, the present is still cool. So if you're sitting here like, oh my gosh, I just like I'm barely trying to figure out how to do the thing that I'm doing, and now all of a sudden I'm being told that I'm doing it wrong. You know what? You're not. It's fine. Like, most of the web, web is built on WordPress anyway. Um, so not, not to like disparage WordPress. It, like, clearly it's working, right? But like, you're, you're cool. It's fine. I just want to give you an idea of what to look forward to, because these solve a lot of really cool, like, interesting problems that you're probably experiencing. So the presence is still cool. Don't feel like you're like, being left behind or anything. This isn't the, you know, if you don't learn this, you'll never, like, never amount to anything. Whatever. It's not that at all. Um, and that, that's everything I wanted to share with you about the Edge. I think it is really, really awesome. Uh, I'm looking forward to what the Edge has to offer for us. And just one last thing I want to say. You're a fantastic person. Thank you. Thank you.